Hello, everyone, and welcome to Council Trends. I am Dr. Mercy Connors, and I am here with Dr. Shawnee Anderson. And I kind of feel like this Council Trends is more of a public service announcement. Mm. This is something that uh, I didn't know about, I and didn't I think know about it is it. really, really important for everybody to really know and understand. And there are a lot of definitions, so. Trust me, we're, we're going to break it down for you. <laughs> but we're going to be talking about impulse control disorders associated with dopaminerg dopaminergic drugs. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Disproportionality <laughs> analysis using Vigibase. Now, first of all, let me explain this. This type of drug works with dopamine in the brain. Okay, so this type of drug that we're talking about um, is often seen with Parkinson's disease, uh, restless leg syndrome, ADHD, uh, some antidepressants, mm -hmm. things like uh, some antipsychotics, but they didn't really get into that piece of it. Um, but so, so what I'm talking about, or what we're talking about today, is something that is often used in these types of drugs in treatment. So it's basically looking at drugs that work on the dopamine system of the brain yep. that are prescribed for those disorders. Yes. So primarily Parkinson's, AD restless legs, ADHD, ADHD, and depression. And depression. And the reason that we found this very, very important is we actually <laughs> saw this in a news article. So then we went and looked for the actual research article. So this is something now being talked about in the mainstream media. But what was really interesting, first of all, those drugs are being used by lots of different people. So let me say that first of all. But if you notice, Parkinson's disease was one of them. So that this tends to be an older generation. Mm -hmm. Now, what they noticed is that there is an increase in, or I should say, a decrease in impulse control. Right, that so, these different classification of drugs that act on the dopamine receptor in the brain yep. are actually causing, through a side effect of the drug, impulse control issues. disorders. Yeah, like issues. Like like I'm not able to stop myself from going and eating a, 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 a cupcake. Or I'm having now, all of a sudden, ever since put on this medication, I'm like compulsively gambling. Yes. Or compulsively sexually acting out or yes. engaging in all of these impulse control disorders. Yes, which I find very interesting. So that's why we're bringing this to the forefront. Um, so the study actually um, looked at uh, Vigibase, which is actually connected to uh, the World Health Organization. And this is the World Health Organization, you know, is that global um, group that, that works on the health around the globe. So the Vigibase specifically is looking at those adverse reactions to drugs. Okay, so that's specifically what we're doing. So They have over 20 million reports of subjective adverse effects of drugs. Yes. I had no idea that there was like one central location in the world that if you have any adverse effects. Yes. That they keep them. That's so and, interesting. And I think it's very interesting because individuals can report it, but then also mm -hmm. healthcare professionals can report it. So it doesn't just have to come from a healthcare professional. It can come from just an individual, right. which gets very interesting later on. Yes. Um, so pretty much what we're talking about is that we are looking at a huge group of people. So, so they were actually assessing people that were on these dopamine-affecting drugs and then these group that's not on these dopamine-affecting drugs. So this was kind of a comparison. Mm -hmm. And what they saw is we saw um, the major thing was hypersexuality. Right. So as an adverse reaction to these types of drugs, that hypersexuality was one of the main things. Now, let me remind well, let's go back. Let's go back to demographics real okay. quick, if that's okay. Yes. They looked at 280, over 282,000 individuals from 1968 to 2020, which mm -hmm. was wild to me that they went all the way back. Yep. And actually found... 852 individuals who were experiencing side effects from the medication mm -hmm. 
um, related to these drugs. Mm -hmm. um, what was interesting is almost 63% of them were male. Mm -hmm. And as you said, hypersexuality was the most frequent impulse control disorder reported as a side effect. Right. And the age group that they saw this in was age 45 to 64. Like that was the main age group. And that's where it's very interesting. Well, I think if you're looking at, if you're only really looking at Parkinson's, mm -hmm. so definitely Parkinson's is a disorder that you get when you're older. Yep. So it would make sense that that would be your group that you'd be working with. But the ADHD and the restless leg syndrome can also be younger, right? Yes. yes. But we're seeing this as an older, the, the people that are being affected more are mm -hmm. older individuals. Also, the people that were affected more were people from America and Europe. So we're not seeing this, and maybe that's because those are those, these drugs are more available. That's what I was wondering, yes. Um, but here's the thing. When you looked at the frequency of these adverse um, reactions, so hypersexuality came out as number one. 155 is what they saw. And then um, you also had impulse control disorder, which is kind of humorous that ADHD would then have an impulse control disorder, but you're As a side effect of the, of medica the medication patient. to treat ADHD. Right. That, I'm not sure how that jives. <laughs> That's what I think is so concerning. Yes. Of, of you're prescribing these drugs for one thing, but yet they're creating a whole other thing. Right. And the complex issue, I think, is around ADHD. Definitely the whole thing with the Parkinson's, but yes. the most confusing one is the ADHD. Yep. Then the next one was the dopamine dysregulation syndrome, and I'm actually going to read what that is. It's, it is a dysfunction of the reward system observed in some individuals taking these types of drugs for extended le length of time. So they have se severely disinhibited patterns of behavior leading to mm. problems such as addiction of the actual medication, gambling addiction, and then the compulsive sexual behaviors. So they really struggle. They want that immediate gratification. It actually says that in the definition that they're looking for the gratification of whatever they're looking for. So it sounds like these drugs that are increasing dopamine in the brain mm -hmm. are now in turn causing a whole host of other problems. Correct. So, so those were just the top three, but we also have gambling as a problem, mm. compulsive shopping as a problem. Uh, Maybe that's my problem. <laughs> impulsive behavior. Um, then there was a libido increased, which mm. that to me is kind of interesting. That's almost like a nice way of saying <laughs> they're, they're acting out sexually. Um, hypomania, another one was actually reaching the level of gambling disorder. Um, stereotypy, and I had to look this one up mm. too because I didn't know what that was. Um, so stereotypy. Often seen in it, uh, autism. It is excessive repetition or lack of variation in movements, mm -hmm. ideas, or patterns of speech, especially when viewed as a symptom of certain developmental or psychiatric disorders. Um, so that one was really interesting. Hyperphagia, which that has to do with eating disorders mm -hmm. and feeding disorders binge eating, food cravings, and then we get into more sexual ones, compulsive sexual behavior, there's hoarding, sexual inappropriate behavior, Wild. excessive masturbation, ex excessive fe sexual fantasies. Like, so it's very interesting that we're, we're all in these like gratification type of things. Mm. It's almost like people are unable to keep themselves in check. But you know what it reminds me of? Is it reminds me of somebody who is doing meth. Mm -hmm. or yes. cocaine, that yes. both those drugs work on dopamine. Mm -hmm. And what you would expect is our list. Yep. And they actually mentioned that in, yes. in this, is that it is very similar. Mm -hmm. And so what the reason that we picked this one for you guys is to just realize that the medication that some people may be taking actually might be 
producing some of these issues. Which is important to understand, because I think when we think of side effects of drugs, we yeah. often think dry mouth, yes. or it, it might affect your sleep, yes. or give you a rash. But some of these, and that's what I think is so interesting, if you're looking at the ones that are not psychological disorders, so for, if you carve out ADHD, that you have a doctor that's giving somebody medication for Parkinson's, you've got like a 70-year-old individual who's mm -hmm. taking this, mm -hmm. hopefully the doctors are explaining that, look, a side effect may be that you are going to all of a sudden have these drives and your impulse control is going to go down. Yep. And you need to understand that you're not losing your mind. It's a side effect it's, of the medication. Yes. And it's actually interesting because they actually think that this is underreported. Right. Um, so one of the other interesting things is that the so the person or the individual who reported these adverse responses were the health professionals, yes. not the individuals. And they actually said normally it's about 50-50. Right. But that's where I'm just wondering, imagine, okay, you're this 70-year-old man who's right. been treated, let's say, for Parkinson's, and all of a sudden they're engaging, let's say, in online pornography, and they never, ever did. Correct. Which actually, now I'm thinking, I actually have a case Oh, this is actually really helpful. <laughs> um, it's an older case. I'm not working with them anymore. But all of a sudden, this individual, her husband started engaging in online pornography at like 85 years old. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if he has Parkinson's and mm -hmm. it may be a side effect of yep. the medication. Yeah. And this is something just, this is again, why we're talking about this, because I don't think that this is something that is well known exactly. in, in the medical field, in the mental health field, because, um, well, first of all, like I said, they're, they're underreported mm -hmm. and they're underreported for, for understandable reasons. If they're, if they're, can you imagine calling your doctor? Yes. Hi, I'm I'm 85 years old, and all of a sudden I have a porn addiction. Yeah, no, but I mean also just sexual fantasies and things right. like that. Those those things could be very shameful for these exactly. individuals at this at this time in their life. Um, but again, also gambling or shopping addiction. Yes. So you know, a lot of these individuals are on a fixed income, mm -hmm. and they may just be starting to engage in some of these situations where now they're losing money and they're not able right. to support themselves. So again, it also helps you realize that this isn't them doing this. This is literally a side effect of, of the, medication. the medication. I do want to point out, because I do think when I first started reading the study, I have a lot of individuals that I treat that are on stimulants for ADHD. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like diving through this, trying to see, could that be explain some of their impulse control issues. Yeah, so it was interesting. I, I actually did highlight this part mm -hmm. because I think that was really important, is that um, because impulse control is one of the high ones, that oftentimes people may not be realizing that the medication's actually producing that. It's They, they assume, oh, the medication's not working. Because a lot of times people yep. will be put on one of these medications yep. to control their impulses because they've got ADHD and one of the signs of ADHD is poor impulse control. Right. So right. they may actually look worse on yes. the medication, yep. not recognizing it may be a side effect. And I just wanted to cover the ones that they particularly noticed this with, in case we have a lot of people out there that are on ADHD medications, mm -hmm. the ones that they found it with were Ritalin and Concerta. Mm -hmm. So it didn't say anything about Vyvanse or some of the other different kinds of ADHD meds, right. but it also did note that they are seeing this in individuals that are taking Wellbutrin mm. for depression okay. or Parnate, which is an MAOI, which is an older class of antidepressants that sometimes people will take for depression. Mm -hmm. So even some individuals that are taking these medications for depression, anxiety, or ADHD may notice an increase mm -hmm. in their impulse control acting out. Yep. And I think this is just important for everybody to realize, to know, maybe this is something that um, if you take one of these drugs, it would be good for you to talk with your doctor about. Yes. Um, if you are in the mental health field, this is something good to assess for, mm -hmm. um, especially if it's like a new symptom and you're like, where is this coming exactly. from? You know? Yes. Um, and, and I think it's just important for us to know also, um, as we're starting to take care of our 
elderly parents, mm. that we need to be aware of some of these other random side effects right. that could be affecting them in a very different way. It's not like something physical, oh, you know, you're you're drinking more or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, it This can really affect their long-term health or you know, long-term lifestyle. And that is an excellent point. As you know, my father, we just had to put into assisted living. Mm -hmm. And we noticed when he got out of the hospital that he really had shifted and just was just not himself, mm -hmm. and we couldn't understand what was going on. And that's when some of the doctors said, you know what, he's on a lot of medication. Mm -hmm. And once they started taking medication off, it's like, ah, there he is. Yeah. And that it's important to understand when you're on a lot of medications that there can absolutely be adverse side effects. They can interact together. Mm -hmm. And just as a clinician, we need to look out for this, but also as individuals. Yep especially um, if we're taking medications and maybe side effects and interactions with supplements yes, and lots yep. of other things. And this is why you really do need to be talking to your doctor, letting them know what you are taking, mm -hmm. even with your supplements, because of those side effects that we're not aware of as just n normal people right. that the med medical field is going to really know. So we hope that you enjoyed this. We hope that this was helpful to you. Please give us a like and let us know in the comments what you thought about this. If you if you're taking these types of drugs or you know somebody and you're like, oh, hey, this makes sense <laughs> now. You know, we would love to hear from you all. And of course, please subscribe to the channel and we would love to see you again. And we love being a part of your life.